Mow bag time again. We've got even more here. I think this is some test gear. I know what this is. It's not for you. Honest. No, it's not for you. Seriously, it's not. So as always, I'll give you links if I can down below. So these are filters for my Pro's Kit SS331, my desoldering iron. So it actually is really clean, but it's a good idea to change your filters every once in a while because it keeps the performance up. Because if you have issues with the airflow being a bit poor, you get more clogging. So cleaning the filters and replacing the filters regularly is a good thing to do in order to keep the thing functioning well. A bit of maintenance makes a big difference. So just a few sets of filters. Um, I was getting a bit low, I had a couple of sets left, so I thought I'd get some more. Here's a real knife. There we go. Ah, okay, this is also from Pro's Kit. This is a spare element for it. Heating element. All things will die eventually, right? This is the element for this one, so... Hopefully a side voltage. I really don't know. If I have a spare, there's a good chance I'll never need to use it. So I can put this in the drawer and then forget about it and forget where I've put it. Of course, when I do need to go and use it, I will be wondering where the hell I put it. But in the meantime, at least I've got one. Bulbs, which have been awfully squashed. Hope they're not broken. Well, they might be broken now. <laughs> These are just oven bulbs, 250 volt or 240 volt bulbs, um, E13 I think they are, yeah I think they're E13. So these are rated for 300 degrees C, so for your like, oven light inside your oven. I replaced one about a year ago and it blew again and um, replaced again a few weeks ago so I thought I'd better get some more bulbs because I'd run out, I had no spares left. Of course you can buy them from a local shop and that sort of stuff, you go to like, I don't know, some place that does bulbs. And you can probably buy them off the shelf, but I was in Ad Express, so I thought I'd buy some from there. Why not? Saves me a trip to the shop. It's probably cheaper too. Now this is not for you. This is a Christmas jumper. This is a present for my wife. By the Pudigy. Limited number, now I did 500 of these. There's only 500 available, they're all gone. And I bought one for her. So, now I've got a medium, it might be the wrong size. I know she normally takes a small, but I'm thinking it's you know winter clothing, you usually put multiple layers. You could have like a couple of tops underneath the jumper, sort of thing she would do. So, I thought I'll get the next size up and play it safe. I'd rather have one which is a little bit big and baggy than one which doesn't fit her. Yeah, you know. The only thing is, in New Zealand, this is a jumper for Christmas. Here in New Zealand, Christmas is in summertime. So it gets quite hot. Now we're usually having the air conditioning running to try and stay cool in summertime and in Christmas time. It, it's very, very backwards, I suppose. It's opposite of Europe where it's cold and maybe snowing at Christmas, depending on where you are. Certainly cold, probably raining. In New Zealand, it's a bit weird to have a Christmas jumper in summer. But my wife feels the cold and she may actually appreciate it in Christmas time. I, I don't know, maybe she will. Don't tell her I bought it for her, okay? It's a secret between you and me. Don't tell her. Another item, let's have a look at this. Oh, brilliant. Right, so I was talking with Fenusi about something. So I reviewed this internal resistance tester not too long ago and had a really good look at it and tested it out and, and put it through its paces and I quite like this unit, it's quite good. One of my criticisms of it at the time was that it didn't have pogo pin type test, it only had clip lead, four Kelvin wire clip lead connectors for it. That was resolved actually before I even released that video. Whilst I was editing, it came to light that actually they became available. And so I actually asked for Nursi, hey, can you send me some of them? So that's what this is here, this bag. And these are the pogo pin toll. So you can buy these with, if, if you buy this unit, you can buy them as a kit with these. And um, this then means you can actually like do battery testing 
uh, and things like that. You, know, you can plug onto the end of the batteries with it. So you can get onto the end of the battery and stuff like that with it and, and test using pogo pins rather than the clip leads. If you want to test on the end of a battery, this could be a little bit tricky. They're a little bit short, really. Um, yeah, yeah. Here's a battery. So if you're trying to test on the end of this battery, you can do it. That's doable. But if these wires here were a little bit longer, that would be better. Literally, a couple of inches longer would be it'd be easier to test this battery and 18650s and stuff like that because you didn't get straight on and push it that way but that's not the only thing you can do I mean this is obviously meant for you can get onto battery terminals and things like that much quicker much more easily than using the clip leads so highly recommend these if you got if you're going to get one of these things get the clip leads with this pack as well clip leads also got a good use they're really useful hugger pins and clip leads even better now, the other thing they've sent is this. Which is the battery jig for it. Let me also adjust the length, so if you want to chest different batteries, you can just move it closer. If you want to chest batteries with this, you can stick them in the jig, like that. And once you've got the length set, you could just change the battery out, stick another one in. That's the idea of this. So that's really nice. So they sent me both of those because I asked for those. And it's actually even got markings on here. AAA, AA. And the other thing they sent me is this. It's a DWS 200. This is something I specifically asked for. As well as those, of course. So this is a soldering iron. Well, soldering station. Supporting more accurate. The base there. And the actual soldering station. We have an accessory pack. So I've been doing a full review on this station. I'm going to show you these obviously but I think that's covered. So soldering station is what I'm going to do a full review on. I'm going to test it out thoroughly. It will study as I choose to. <laughs> Power cord there. A C210 tip uh, handle and a C245 handle. Now C245 is what I've got already on my Jabe soldering station over here. So I've got Interchangeable bits there, really. That's two tens bits. Yeah. Nice. Good. Accessory kit there. Get these helping hand attachments. Some other bits. Okay, cool. So I'll be doing a full review on this. So I'm going to try and pack all this back in the box and watch out for that review coming out either before you see this video or after it. I'm not quite sure. I don't know, it's, it's getting confusing this whole sequencing thing because I've been doing so many reviews recently. And trying to keep things in sequence is being tricky. So, that'd be good. Anyway, it's supposed to be a 200 watt soldering station. Got the earth point on this back there. Uh, some attachment point there, what's that for? Let me fill it out, where's that go? <laughs> go somewhere, I'll figure it out. Um, you got this piece here. I oh, was at the side there. It goes in there like that. There we go. Bit holders. Rear power switch. I'm not a fan of rear power switches, but on something like this, it's not actually hard to get to it. You can just reach over and do it. I've been using that on my Jabe soldering station for a while now. It's got the rear switch on it. And you get used to it. Um, in this situation it's actually not really a big deal to have a switch on the back it's fine and I think this actually got like a standby mode so you can actually just power it down from here so like a soft power instead and also see high power switch I think I've got that right anyway we'll find out anyway so watch out for the full review on this that should be good I'll be linking down below to this and those and all the other stuff right the last packet if you think you can guess where this came from put it in the comments down below Okay, so if you, if you think you know where I got this package from, comment down below. I'll wait. No, I won't. You commenting? You, you putting comments down now? Right. Want to see all these 
place. Now, is this going to be Def Pump repackaging? I don't know. I've had mixed results from this seller. Some have been good, some not so good. All from the same person, so it's been interesting. Or at least for the same store, maybe it's not the same person sending it, but anyway. Is this Defcon proof? Eh, uh, maybe. Let's move this out of the way. Yeah. Okay, I think that's alright. We'll give him a Defcon free packaging. It was good enough this time. I've had two good packages from him, really well packed up. Well, actually, this is now the third one. And I've had one bad one. This one is in a little bag. IOTech. Let's reposition the camera. So let's have a look. What we got here? We've also got some manuals and stuff sitting out here. It's a bit dirty. I guess something's disintegrating somewhere. Maybe it's inside the bag. It could be. Could be the inside the bag disintegrating. Hmm. So we've got some manuals, brochures or something. Cool. We'll look at those maybe. Yeah, it's definitely a lot of dust inside this bag. I think this bag's falling apart, which is a real shame. Pull this out. We've got a actual book. We've got a template thing here for changing the buttons. It's the analyzer 488. This black stuff is not nice. It's got everywhere. Instruction manual. Does it have any circuit or another bit of that? Not got any circuit or anything in here. Oh. I think it's all usage, it's all usage stuff. Okay, but all this black stuff has got to go. It's going to spend some time cleaning this up, and that's going to be fun. So, unfortunately, no circuit diagrams. I think I might need to get a new bag. I don't know. I'm not sure where that debris is coming from. There it is. This was not cheap. <laughs> it folds up. So that's a GPIB tester, basically an analyzer. You can hook up to a GPIB bus and see what's going on. What's in here? Got a cable and a power supply. C and M. 26AWG. And power supply is a special one, it's like a DIN connector. Five volts, common on ground, interestingly. Um, okay, well, this is power block for that, and there's the plug for it. Alright, so I'm not going to power this up right now, I'm starting to, because I need to convert this thing to the right voltage, well, maybe. Um, it's 117 volts only, 25 watt. Probably just a transformer in there, so I can probably just swap that out. I don't know, we'll see how lucky I get with that, but I'll look at that another time. It's there, it's all this stuff here. That's the center grain. Lovely. Another toy to play with for diagnosing GPIB systems. But I need to obviously give this thing a good clean up and sort it all out, but... Yeah, it's a shame about the bag. The bag's falling apart. It means I need to find another bag for it. Shouldn't be too hard. Get a small laptop bag, should be good enough. Right, I've set my auto transformer to 117 volts. Plugged everything in. Turn on the power. What happens? It's pulling out four watts of the main power supply. Here's to a power switch. That one there. Analyzer. Version 1.5. Bus null. Hey, at least it powers up. That's good. It's not completely dead. <laughs> Excellent. It's looking at the display there. The bottom row is a little bit dimmer than the rest. That could be a bit of burning from something. It's possible. How do I use this? I've got no idea. So you can do matching of different uh, characters and stuff like that on here. So it triggers it on certain commands. Anyway, it seems to power up at least. That's a good start. I might do a video about this later on. We'll see. I've got to figure out how to use the thing first. Lots of black powder to clean up. Uh, yeah, okay. 
other videos down below to watch. There's other stuff down there you can watch if it might interest you. You can click here to subscribe to the channel if you want to watch and see more of my things, my repairs and things like that. Electronic subject stuff. And there's a Patreon supporter link over there if you want to become a Patreon supporter and support the channel. Um, you can also support the channel other ways. You can just like click on the share button down there or even just the thanks button if you want to give a one-off donation. Patreon supporters get access to extra information. They see the videos before everybody else. And they also get things like service manuals and manuals, whatever I can put on the Patreon links when I publish videos. They get a few extras like that. YouTube members, unfortunately, don't get the same benefits because it doesn't offer that ability to do that, unfortunately. YouTube members still get you know, uh, pre-releases, but they don't get the v extra stuff like the manuals and whatever. That's only available through Patreon, unfortunately. So if you're going to do anything, I recommend Patreon. Get slow.